Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am studying ortho notes from the beginning. Let's study together. Starting with knee joint. There are two menisci for knee joint. That is medial meniscus as well as lateral meniscus. Basically this menisci is a cushion or shock absorber. First of all about the medial meniscus. It is C shaped more elliptical wider than lateral meniscus it is peripherally attached to medial collateral ligament medial meniscus is less mobile it can't escape twisting injury medial meniscus is more injured when compared to lateral meniscus the mode of injury in the medial meniscus is valgus injury next is about lateral meniscus lateral meniscus is semicircular in shape this is free from lateral collateral ligament here uh, this lateral meniscus is more mobile it can escape twisting injury um, compared to medial meniscus lateral meniscus is less injured mode of injury in lateral meniscus is varus injury in case of any meniscal tear or any injury affecting the meniscus the investigation of choice that we do is MRI but the gold standard investigation or most reliable investigation is arthroscopy. Treatment of choice if there is any injury or tear in the menisci we do arthroscopic partial menisectomy. Menisci move forward with knee movement that is known as knee extension and also if the menisci move backward with the knee movement we call it as knee flexion. Most common ligament to degenerate is medial meniscus. In case of post partial menisectomy, lateral menisci degenerates more than medial menisci. Most common meniscal tear overall is medial menisci. Most common meniscal tear with acute anterior cruciate ligament tear is lateral menisci. Most common meniscal tear with chronic anterior cruciate ligament tear is medial menisci. Next, talking about the collaterals of the knee joint, there is two collaterals that is medial collateral ligament as well as lateral collateral ligament. Medial collateral ligament is attached to the medial menisci. It is more fixed, less mobile, can't escape twisting injury. It is more injured when compared to lateral collateral ligament. About the lateral collateral ligament, it is free from lateral meniscus, less fixed, it is more mobile escapes twisting injury mechanism of injury in medial collateral ligament is valgus injury and the mechanism of injury in lateral collateral ligament is varus injury clinical test for medial collateral ligament injury is valgus stress test and the clinical test for lateral collateral ligament injury is varus stress test if these clinical tests are done and if it is positive, investigation of choice is MRI. Treatment is like isolated collateral ligaments are best managed conservatively. That means by taking rest or by using cold packs or elevation of leg or by applying knee braces. Most common ligament to get injured is medial collateral ligament. There are two cruciates for knee joint that is anterior cruciate ligament as well as posterior cruciate ligament. Anterior cruciate ligament prevents excess anterior translation of tibia over femur. Posterior cruciate ligament prevents excess posterior sagging of tibia over femur. These both cruciate ligaments that is anterior as well as posterior cruciate ligaments are intracapsular, intraarticular and also extrasynovial. Posterior cruciate ligament is 1.5 1 times broader and also it is better visualized on MRI. Most common site of tear in anterior cruciate ligament is mid substance and the most common site of tear in posterior cruciate ligament is femoral attachment. The mechanism of injury in anterior cruciate ligament is hyperextension injury and the mechanism of injury in posterior cruciate ligament is hyperflexion injury. Clinical test for anterior cruciate ligament injury is anterior Dreyer's test, Lachman's test, pivot shift test. Lachman test is the best test for acute anterior cruciate ligament injury. The most specific test or gold standard test for anterior cruciate ligament injury is pivot shift test. 
clinical test to examine the posterior cruciate ligament is posterior Droyer's test. If the clinical tests are positive, investigation of choice is MRI and the gold standard investigation or the most reliable investigation is arthroscopy. Treatment of choice is arthroscopic anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction in case of anterior cruciate ligament injury as well as arthroscopic posterior cruciate ligament reconstruction for posterior cruciate ligament injury. For the arthroscopic reconstruction, the most common donor tendon graft is taken from semi-tendinosis as well as from gracilis muscle. Most common surgically operated knee portion of the leg is anterior cruciate ligament. Most common cause of heme arthrosis is anterior cruciate ligament. Andromedial part of anterior cruciate ligament is in knee 90 degree flexion and Posterolateral part of anterior cruciate ligament is in complete knee extension. Most pain sensitive structure in joint is capsule. Least pain sensitive structure in joint is articular cartilage. Next is about meniscal cyst. Meniscal cyst appear as swelling along the posterior joint line which disappear in joint on knee flexion. This is known as Pisani sign. Meniscal tear is more seen in medial meniscus and meniscal cyst or discoid meniscus is more seen in lateral meniscus. Locking of knee. What is locking of knee? In locking of knee, medial rotation of femur over tibia occurs. Position of knee during locking of knee is knee extension. Locking of knee is seen in standing posture. Unlocking of knee means lateral rotation of fever over tibia. Position of knee during unlocking of knee is knee flexion. Unlocking of knee is in sitting posture. Portals in arthroscopy. Portals are superolateral, androlateral, andromedial. Superolateral portal is placed for patellofemoral joint visualization. Androlateral portal is placed for vision. And andromedial portal is placed for instrumentation. ACL or PCL tear is seen in female athletes more than male athletes. Knee ligament injury investigation of choice is MRI. Gold standard investigation is arthroscopy. Investigation of choice for knee cartilage injury is arthroscopy. In ACL or PCL tear there is increased ligament laxity. Multi-ligament knee injury is injury to at least 2 out of 4 ligaments. Next is Plica syndrome. Plica syndrome means embryonal remnant of synovium. There are four types of embryonal remnants of synovium that is medial, lateral, suprapetellar and infrapetellar. Clinical features of Plica syndrome is anterior knee pain which exaggerates on prolonged sitting. Locking or catching symptoms are seen here. Plica syndrome is associated with chondromalacia petalli. Complication of Plica syndrome is meniscal tear. Investigation of choice for Plica syndrome is MRI. Gold standard investigation of Plica syndrome is arthroscopy. Treatment of choice for Plica syndrome is arthroscopic Plica excision. Next topic is oncology. Most common bone tumor is metastasis or secondary. Most common malignant bone tumor is metastasis or secondary. Most common primary malignant bone tumor is multiple myeloma more than osteosarcoma. Most common benign bone tumor is osteochondroma or exostosis. Most common true benign bone tumor is osteoid osteoma. Most common primary malignant bone tumor of first decade of life is Ewing sarcoma. Most common primary malignant bone tumor of chest wall is chondrosarcoma. Most common radiation induced bone tumor is osteosarcoma. Most radio resistant bone tumor is osteosarcoma. Most common bone tumor of hand bone is enchondroma. Most common benign bone tumor of hand bone is enchondroma. Most common primary malignant bone tumor of hand bone is chondrosarcoma. Most common malignant tumor of hand is squamous cell carcinoma. Next topic is chondroblastoma or Cotman's tumor. This is a benign tumor. Age limit is less than 18 years. This case is seen in skeletally immature patients. Chondroblastoma or Cotman's tumor is eccentric, epiphyseal, slightly expansile, symmetrically expansile. 
In this case, patient presents with long-standing pain and swelling which increases on exertion. Chondroblastoma or Cotman's tumor mimics synovitis. On x-ray, there is well-circumscribed epiphyseal lesion with regular margins and also we can see stippled calcification. On biopsy, we can see chicken wire calcification. Management is extended curettage and also bone graft or bone cement. Giant cell tumor or osteoclastoma. This is locally aggressive tumor. 5 to 15 percentage of giant cell tumors are malignant. This is seen more in females than in males. Most common bone affected is epiphysis of distal femur. Giant cell tumor mainly affects vertebral body of the spine. On gross examination, we can see eccentric epiphyseal gross expansile and also asymmetrical expansile lesion. Here we can see eggshell crackling lesion. Age group is 20 to 40 years. This case is seen in skeletally mature patients. On x-ray, there is geographical destruction. Uh, the main feature here is soap bubble appearance. Management is wide excision with customized prosthetic allograft reconstruction. On microscopy of the giant cell tumor, we can see giant cells that is 40 to 60 nuclei are present here. Next is giant cell variants. Code for giant cell variants are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A for aneurysmal bone cyst, B for Brown's tumor, C for chondroblastoma, D for desmoblastic fibroma, E for epulis or giant cell rich granuloma, F for fibroma of known ossifying type, G for giant cell rich osteosarcoma, H for histiocytoma. Next topic is enchondroma. Most common benign bone tumor of hand bone is enchondroma. Age group is 4th to 6th decade. It is seen in males more than in females. Most common site of enchondroma is hand more than foot. In hand, it is seen in phalanges more than in metacarpals. On x-ray, we can see well-defined lytic lesion with disp of calcification that is stippled calcification. Enchondroma is usually solitary, rarely it is multiple. Multiple means it consists of alter as well as mafuki. Alter means multiple enchondromatosis. Mafuki means multiple enchondromatosis plus phlebolith plus cavernous hemangiomas. Next topic is aneurysmal bone cyst. It is a locally aggressive bone tumor. It is seen mainly in females. Most common site is metaphysis of proximal femur. It mainly affects the posterior column of spine. Age group is 10 to 18 years. It is grossly expansile, more pulsatile. It is asymmetrically expansile. We can feel bruit on auscultation. This lesion is eccentric. On x-ray, we can see multiple blood-filled sinusoids with wealth defined septate in between closest giant cell variant is aneurysmal bone cyst treatment of choice is wide excision and also allograft reconstruction next topic is osteosarcoma osteosarcoma is highly highly malignant bone tumor the most common primary malignant bone tumor of known hematopoietic origin is osteosarcoma most common radiation induced bone tumor is osteosarcoma. Most radio resistant bone tumor is osteosarcoma. Types of osteosarcoma are primary osteosarcoma and also secondary osteosarcoma. Primary osteosarcoma is seen in 75% of patients. It is seen in second decade. Secondary osteosarcoma is seen in 25% of patients. It is seen in fifth to 10th decade. This uh, secondary osteosarcoma is a pre-malignant lesion and uh, it is seen most commonly with post-radiation, chronic osteomyelitis, p53 mutation, hereditary survivor of retinoblastoma and also in Petit's disease of bone. Most common bone affected in osteosarcoma is metaphysis of distal femur. Most common site of secondary osteosarcoma is lungs that is via bloodstream mainly this osteosarcoma is by bone to bone metastasis 
X-ray finding for osteosarcoma is for remembering there are two P's. First P is periosteal reaction and second P is periosteal elevation. Periosteal elevation means Codman's triangle and periosteal reaction means it is the sun ray appearance or sun burst appearance which can be seen along the Sharpie's fibers. Management of osteosarcoma is neoadjuvant treatment. If a patient comes with osteosarcoma with a decreased size or vascularity of the lesion or if that part is a metastatic portion, we give preoperative chemotherapy. And uh, if the lesion is around 10 cm, we do radical excision. The next method of treatment is megaprosthesis or arthroplasty. And the other method of treatment is post-operative chemotherapy. Another method for treatment is T10 protocol or Rosenberg protocol. What is T10 protocol or Rosenberg protocol? That is, it includes high dose methotrexate, that is, cisplatin substitute. Next is bleomycin, cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide. Next is doxorubicin, actinomycin, and also vincristin. So, T10 protocol or Rosenberg protocol consists of high dose methotrexate bleomycin, cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide, doxorubicin, actinomycin, vincristin. Next topic is osteochondroma or exostosis. The most common benign bone tumor is osteochondroma or exostosis. It is not true bone tumor. It is mainly seen in males. Most common site of osteochondroma or exostosis is metaphysis of distal femur. Age group is 4 to 12 years. This lesion usually regresses before skeletal maturity. Types of osteochondroma or exostosis is sessile without stalk, pedunculated with stalk, solitary, multiple. Multiple type of osteochondroma or exostosis includes Masada syndrome and also hereditary multiple exostosis that is HME. What is Masada syndrome? Masada syndrome is of malignant potential. It consists of multiple osteochondromatosis of forearm. Management of choice for osteochondroma or exostosis is surgical excision if symptomatic. Next topic is osteoid osteoma. Most common true benign bone tumor is osteoid osteoma. It is seen in second or third decade. It is mainly seen in males. Most common bone affected is femur and also posterior column of spine. Structure for osteoid osteoma is the lesion is peripherally thick. It has a reactive sclerotic rim. It is centrally radiolucent. Prostaglandin is increased and it has rich nidus which is known as osteodid. Diameter of the lesion is less than 2 cm. Clinically, patient presents with exaggerated night pain. 90% of the condition is relieved with aspirin. Management of choice is low-dose aspirin, radiofrequency ablation and also curatage of nidus. Next topic is osteoblastoma. It is a rare bone tumor which is aggressive than osteoid osteoma. It is seen in second to third decade. It is mainly seen in males. The most common bone affecting osteoblastoma is posterior column of spine. It is a radiolucent lesion with peripheral rim and central sclerotic region. Prostaglandin is increased and it is rich in nidus. Diameter is more than 2 cm. Patient usually presents with increased night pain. 40 to 50 percentage of the patients have aspirin relief. Management of choice for osteoblastoma is marginal excision with bone grafting or bone cement. Next is Ewing sarcoma. It is mainly seen in males of age group 5 to 15 year. Usually patient presents with pain and swelling of the thigh. Most common site is diaphysis of femur. Investigation of choice is CBC, ESR, CRP. CRP will be positive, ESR will be increased, total leukocyte count and neutrophils will also be increased. Ewing sarcoma usually mimics osteomyelitis. There will be temporary relief with NSAIDs or antibiotics. On X-ray of Ewing sarcoma, we can see laminated or lamellated periosteal reaction that is onion pale appearance. 
investigation of choice for Ewing sarcoma is MRI. Best investigation for Ewing sarcoma is biopsy. Biopsy consists of histopathological examination, immunohistochemistry and also karyotyping. Histopathological investigation shows small round cells and also pass positive and also diastase sensitive. Immunohistochemistry shows CD99 positive, CDS positive, NSC positive, MIC2 positive, S100 positive. Karyotyping shows T1122 and also T722 positive. Karyotyping is the most diagnostic method. Bone to bone metastasis is seen in Ewing sarcoma more than osteosarcoma. Most chemo or radiosensitive lesion is Ewing sarcoma. Management of choice is ECRT that is extracorporeal radiotherapy plus internal fixation. Next are some important one-liners. First one, bony secondary metastasis in males is seen in carcinoma prostate more than lung. Bony secondary metastasis in female is seen in carcinoma breast more than lung. Bony secondary metastasis in child is neuroblastoma. Bony secondary metastasis of overall sequence is BPL that is breast more than prostate more than lung. Bony secondary metastasis which is blastic is prostate and seminoma. Bony secondary metastasis which is lytic is carcinoma kidney and carcinoma thyroid and also carcinoma lung. Bony secondary metastasis which is mixed is carcinoma breast. Investigation of choice for occult blastic secondary metastasis is bone scan. Investigation of choice for occult lytic secondary metastasis is PET CT. Pulsatile bony secondary metastasis is seen in follicular carcinoma thyroid and also renal cell carcinoma. Most common site of secondary from carcinoma breast is thoracic spine. Most common cause of pathological fracture is osteoporosis more than bone secondary. Most common site of pathological fracture overall is vertebral body that is T12. Most common site of pathological fracture due to osteoporosis is vertebral body. Most common site of pathological fracture due to bone secondary is neck of femur. Mirror score calculates risk of impending pathological fracture in bony secondary. The parameters of mirror score includes size of lesion, site of lesion, nature of lesion and also pain due to lesion. Mirror score 1 is size of lesion less than one third. Site of lesion is in upper limb. Nature of lesion is blastic. There will be mild pain due to lesion. Mirror score 2 is size of lesion will be in between one third to two third. Site of lesion is in lower limb. Nature of lesion is mixed. There will be moderate pain due to lesion. Mirror score 3 is size of lesion more than two third. Site of lesion will be around the hip. Nature of lesion is lytic. There will be severe pain due to lesion. Total more than or equal to 8 mirror score means high risk of pathological fracture. Management is prophylactic internal fixation. Next topic is osteoarthritis. Misnomer for osteoarthritis is DJD that is degenerative joint disorder. Osteoarthritis is a non-inflammatory lesion. It is also known as wear and tear joint disorder. Risk factor for osteoarthritis include age more than 65 years, BMI more than 30, females more than males, sedentary lifestyle, occupational hazard, previous trauma. Joints affected by osteoarthritis include knee, hip, spine, first carpometacarpal joint, first metatarsophalangeal joint, proximal interphalangeal joint and also distal interphalangeal joint. Most common bone affected in OA knee that is osteoarthritis knee is patella. Most common compartment is medial. Most common muscle is vastus medialis obliquus. Osteoarthritis first affects the articular cartilage. What is articular cartilage? It is a smooth white tissue that covers the ends of the bones where they come together to form joints. This articular cartilage allows bones to glide over each other with very little friction so this osteoarthritis affects the first layer 
that is articular cartilage this is the pathogenesis next is outer bridge staging outer bridge staging one is articular cartilage water content will be increased and there will be softening of the articular cartilage stage 2 is fissures or cracks or fragmentation can be seen stage 3 is partial detachment and stage 4 is complete detachment with exposed subchondral bone clinically speaking patient will be around 60 year of age mainly females first earlier symptom is pain and the other symptoms are tenderness swelling crepitus reduced walking distance and also deformity deformity affecting the knee is genovarum deformity affecting proximal interphalangeal joint is bochard's nodes deformity affecting distal interphalangeal joint is herberden's node on x-ray first earliest x-ray sign is asymmetric reduction in joint space later loose bodies and osteophytes can be seen and subchondral sclerosis happens and finally absolute destruction of joint space occurs Management of osteoarthritis include conservative management and also surgical management. First talking about conservative management, walking crutches or stick can be used with the opposite hand. Next is hinged knee braces which is offloading device. Next is NSADs. NSAD is the safest mode of conservative management that is NSAD like acetaminophen can be used. Next is COX-2 inhibitor that is itoricoxib of uh, 60 mg 90 mg or 120 mg can be used here there is no gi side effect other treatment is topical liniments next is isometric quadriceps strengthening exercise can be done next is intra articular visco supplementation like hyaluronic acid derivatives can be used it can control the viscosity of synovial fluid Surgical management of osteoarthritis include arthroscopy as well as total knee replacement. Arthroscopy is done in the initial phase of disease and here we can remove the inflamed tissue, remove the loose body and also arthrolysis can be done. And uh, other method of surgical management is total knee replacement. The absolute indication for total knee replacement is pain. Glucosamine, diacerin, chondroitin sulfate, S adenosyl methionine, these all can be used for osteoarthritis. Next topic is TB. First of all, about port spine. Etiology of port spine is mycobacterium TB. Pulmonary TB is caused by the 10 rise to 7 to 10 rise to 9 basilary load. Skeletal TB is caused by 10 rise to 5 basilary load. Pathogenesis of port spine is most common root is hematogenous. Site for port spine is lung more than, lymph node more than, GUT more than, skeleton. In skeleton, most common site is spine more than, hip more than, knee more than, foot more than, elbow more than, hand more than, shoulder. Least common site of skeletal TB is bursal TB among bursa. Most common bursitis is trochanteric bursa. Least common site of TB in bone is mandible. Least common site of TB in joint is temporomandibular joint. Types of lesion in port spine is paradiscal TB, central TB, anterior TB as well as posterior or appendiceal TB. First of all, talking about paradiscal TB, it is the most common type. Here there is arterial spread. First part affected is vertebral body adjacent to intervertebral disc. Kissing cecostrum is present here. Most common type or lesion to complicate into ports paraplegia. Next is central TB. It is by venous spread by the intrusious venous plexus. First part affected is center of vertebral body. Intervertebral disc is usually preserved. Later stages whole body collapses. It is known as concertina collapse and forms flat vertebral body that is vertebra plana. Anterior TB. Anterior TB spreads subperiosteally beneath anterior longitudinal ligament. It is seen in children. Here there is wet or exudative TB. On x-ray we can see aneurysmal phenomenon. Next is posterior or appendiceal TB. Posterior or appendiceal TB is the least common type. Least common site of uh, posterior or appendiceal TB is facet joint. Second least common site is spinous process.
ക്ലിനിക്കൽ സ്പെക്ട്രം ഓഫ് പോർട്ട്സ് പൈൻ ഇൻക്ലൂഡ്സ് ഫേസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ഏർലിയസ്റ്റ് സിംറ്റം ഈസ് ബാക്ക് പെയിൻ ഫേസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ഏർലിയസ്റ്റ് സൈൻ ഈസ് പാരാസ്പൈനൽ മസിൽ സ്പാസും റെസ്ട്രിക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് അറ്റ് സ്പൈൻ വിൽ ബി റിഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ദ ഗേറ്റ് ഹിയർ ഈസ് നോൺ എസ് കോഷ്യസ് ഗേറ്റ് ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഈസ് മിലിറ്ററി ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് സിക്സ്റ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഓഫ് ദ കേസസ് ഷോസ് കോൺസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷണൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ടി ബി ഹിയർ കോൾഡ് ആപ്സസ് വിൽ ബി പ്രസൻറ്റ് കോൾഡ് ആപ്സസ് ട്രാവൽസ് അലോങ് ദ നെർവ് ബണ്ടേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ മസിൽ ഷീറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ദ കോൾഡ് ആപ്സസ് ട്യൂമർ വിൽ ബി പ്രസൻറ്റ് ബട്ട് നോ റൂമർ നോ ഡോളർ നോ ക്യാലർ ഡിഫോമിറ്റി ഹിയർ ഈസ് ദർ വിൽ ബി പ്രോമിനൻസ് ഫൈനസ് പ്രോസസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദ കൈഫോട്ടിക് ഡിഫോമിറ്റി ദിസ് ഡിഫോമിറ്റി എഫക്റ്റിംഗ് വൺ വെർട്ടിബ്രൽ ബോഡി ഇസ് നോൺ ആസ് നക്കിൾ എഫക്റ്റിംഗ് ടു ടു ത്രീ വെർട്ടിബ്രൽ ബോഡി ഇസ് നോൺ ആസ് ആംഗുലർ കൈഫസ് ഓർ ഗിബസ് ഇഫ് ദിസ് ഡിഫോമിറ്റി എഫക്ട്സ് മോർ ദാൻ ത്രീ വെർട്ടിബ്രൽ ബോഡി ദിസ് ഇസ് നോൺ ആസ് റൗണ്ടഡ് കൈഫസ് ഡയഗ്നോസിസ് ഇസ് ബൈ ടേക്കിംഗ് എക്സ്റേ ഫസ്റ്റ് എക്സ്റേ സൈൻ ഇസ് reduced intervertebral disc space causing vertebral body destruction or erosion which shows paravertebral soft tissue shadow causing bony ankylosis tb of any bone or joint ends up in fibrous ankylosis except spine here in the spine we can see bony ankylosis tb of any bone never shows periosteal reaction on x-ray except tubercular dactylitis or spina ventosa MRI is the investigation of choice for port spine. CT guided biopsy is the most reliable or gold standard for diagnosis. Management of port spine is taking bed rest, using Taylor spinal brace and chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment along with anti-tubercular drugs. Surgical management is by default relapse resistance, compression over the vital structure, late presentation can cause advanced paraplegia in late presentation that is for advanced paraplegia surgical methods are hong kong operation that is anterior decompression of tb cervical spine and next method is anterolateral decompression with bone grafting anterolateral decompression with bone grafting is the most common surgery performed structures removed in this operation is transverse process part of pedicle deceased vertebral body posterior part of the rib and deceased intervertebral disc next is sports paraplegia most common site for sports paraplegia is upper thoracic spine stages of sports paraplegia include stage 1 patient will be unaware of the neuro deficit on examination ankle clonus present spasticity can be seen In stage 2 ports paraplegia patient will be aware of the neuro deficit with support ambulatory normal sensory and motor loss will be present here stage 3 of ports paraplegia is paraplegia in extension here sensory loss will be less than 50 percentage stage 4 of ports paraplegia is paraplegia in flexion sensory loss more than 50 percentage and also sphincter loss is seen here prognostic marker or prognostic factor for ports paraplegia include good prognosis are young age early onset shorter duration slow progression wet or exudative type of lesion stage 1 or 2 of severity good condition kyphotic deformity less than 60 degree cord status in mri will be normal bad prognosis for ports paraplegia is older age late onset longer duration rapid progression dry type of lesion stage 3 or 4 poor condition kyphotic deformity will be more than 60 degree cord status in mri is myelomalacic change myelomalacic change is hemorrhage happens within the spine or something holds the flow of blood to the spinal cord causing softening of the spinal cord most common cause of kyphosis in india is tb Next topic is TB hip. TB hip is seen in 15% of the skeletal TB cases. Comparing the TB cases, spine TB is more than hip TB. Hip TB, the focus of appearance is most commonly in the acetabular roof. Then uh, it is seen in epiphysis of head, metaphysis area, that is metaphysis area of the watershed between the femoral and obturator circulation, that is Babcock's triangle and also in greater trochanter. Staging of TB hip. Staging of TB hip includes 
സ്റ്റേജ് വൺ സൈനോവൈറ്റിസ് ഇൻ സ്റ്റേജ് വൺ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് അബ്ഡക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് ഇ ആർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ എ സി എൻ കോഡീസ് ഫാബർ എഫ് എ ബി ഇ ആർ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ അബ്ഡക്ഷൻ എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് കേസ് ജോയിൻറ്റ് എഫ്യൂഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ക്യാപ്സുലാർ ഡിസ്റ്റൻഷൻ എ സി എൻ ഓൺ എക്സ്റേ വൈഡൻ ജോയിൻറ്റ് സ്പേസ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ സ്റ്റേജ് ടു ഇസ് ഏർലി ആർത്രൈറ്റിസ് ഇൻ ഏർലി ആർത്രൈറ്റിസ് ഫാഡർ ഇസ് സീൻ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഫാഡർ എഫ് ഫോർ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ എ ഡി ഫോർ അഡക്ഷൻ ഐ ആർ ഫോർ ഇൻറ്റേർണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഹിയർ ഡിസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ആർട്ടിക്കുലർ കാർട്ടിലേജ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ട്രൂ ഷോർട്ടനിങ് ലെസ് ദാൻ വൺ സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർ ഓൺ എക്സ്റേ നാരോയിങ് ഓഫ് ജോയിൻ സ്പേസ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ സ്റ്റേജ് ത്രീ അഡ്വാൻസ്ഡ് ആർത്രൈറ്റിസ് ഓർ ലേറ്റ് ആർത്രൈറ്റിസ് ഹിയർ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് അഡക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് ഇൻറ്റേർണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫാഡർ എഫ് എ ഡി ഐ ആർ എഫ് ഫോർ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ എ ഡി ഫോർ അഡക്ഷൻ ഐ ആർ ഫോർ ഇൻറ്റേർണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഫർദർ ഡിസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ജോയിൻറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ ഹിയർ ട്രൂ ഷോർട്ടനിങ് വിൽ ബി മോർ ദാൻ വൺ സെൻറ്റിമീറ്റർ ഓൺ എക്സ്റേ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഡിസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ജോയിൻറ്റ് സ്പേസ് ഓർ ഹെഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് അസെറ്റാബ്ലം ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ സ്റ്റേജ് ഫോർ ഈസ് ലേറ്റ് ആർത്രൈറ്റിസ് വിത്ത് സബ്ലക്സേഷൻ ഓർ ഡിസ്ലൊക്കേഷൻ ഹിയർ ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് അഡക്ഷൻ പ്ലസ് ഇൻറ്റേർണൽ റൊട്ടേഷൻ ഈസ് സീൻ ഗ്രോസ് ഷോർട്ടനിങ് അപ്പോർഡ് ആൻഡ് ലാറ്ററൽ സബ്ലക്സേഷൻ ഓർ ഡിസ്ലൊക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹെഡ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഫോൾസ് അസെറ്റാബുലം ഹയർ അപ്പ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വോണ്ടർലിംഗ് അസെറ്റാബുലം ഓർ ട്രാവലിംഗ് അസെറ്റാബുലം പ്രസൻറ്റ് മോട്ടർ ആൻഡ് പാസ്റ്റൽ എപ്പിയറൻസ് ഈസ് സീൻ ഇൻ സ്റ്റേജ് ഫോർ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ പിക്ചർ ഓഫ് ടി ബി ഹിപ്പീസ് ദിസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് സീൻ ഇൻ അറൗണ്ട് ഫൈവ് ടു ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ഇയേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഏജ് മോസ്റ്റ് കോമൺ ഏർലിയസ്റ്റ് സിംറ്റം ഇസ് പെയിൻഫുൾ ലിംബ് here the gait is limping or antalgic gait muscle wasting present shortening present deformities are seen here cold abscess is present in late stage of tb hip fibrous ankylosis is seen on x-ray femister striated is present what is femister striated it is juxta articular osteopenia periarticular erosions and reduced joint space This juxta articular osteopenia is the first x-ray sign seen in TB hip. Management of TB hip in active stages give anti-tubercular drugs and also next mode of treatment is skin traction. It can relieve spasm. If the patient doesn't respond to the above like by after giving anti-tubercular drugs or after giving skin traction after putting skin traction if the patient is not responding then the next method is wilkinson's joint clearance surgery in healed stage of tb hip we can do subtrochanteric osteotomy next method is girdle stone excisional arthroplasty next is arthrodesis and the other method is arthroplasty the main aim of arthrodesis is to provide a painless fixed stable joint the main aim of arthroplasty is to provide a painless mobile stable joint in healed stage of tb hip most commonly performed surgery is arthrodesis it is the surgical fusion of a joint next is about hip dislocation first of all talking about posterior hip dislocation 90 percentage of the patients presents with posterior hip dislocation here the mechanism of injury is flexion adduction internal rotation that is fadir f a d i r clinical attitude is f a d i r that is flexion adduction internal rotation most common complication is avascular necrosis of head of femur most common nerve injury here is sciatic nerve anterior hip dislocation is in 7 to 8 percentage of patients we can see anterior hip dislocation mechanism of injury is flexion abduction external rotation that is faber f a b e r most common complication is avascular necrosis of head of femur most common nerve injury is femoral nerve central dislocation of hip is seen in 1 to 2 percentage of patients here the mechanism of injury is flexion abduction external rotation or flexion adduction internal rotation that means fadir or faber management for hip dislocation is closed reduction under general anesthesia method of closed reduction is stimson's gravity method east baltimore lift or modified alice method next topic is fracture of proximal femur here 
we can see fracture in the neck of femur as well as in the intertrochanteric region first of all about the fracture in the neck of femur this is intracapsular seen in fifth to sixth decade this is mainly due to a trivial trauma that is low energy fall moderate to severe pain in scapa's triangle present shortening less than 1 inch can be seen external rotation deformity is 0 to 45 degree most common complication is avascular necrosis of head and also known union classification of neck of femur fracture includes anatomical classification powell's classification and also garden's classification EO protocol for management of fracture neck of femur includes first of all taking the age if the patient's age is less than 60 years and also if this fracture happened less than three weeks so we should do internal fixation with cancellous cannulated screw usually three screws inserted in triangle pattern if the fracture is about more than three weeks mri should be taken to see the viability of the head and if the uh, if uh, when we examine the head of the femur if the avascular necrosis is present we should do revascularization surgery that is mayer's operation that is uh, the vascularized muscle pedicle grafting should be done with quadratus femoris muscle and if the avascular necrosis is not present take the x-ray to look for greater trochanter that is if there is upriding greater trochanter do powell's lateral surface closing wedge osteotomy and if the greater trochanter is normal do mcmurray's shaft medializing intertrochanteric osteotomy if the patient's age is more than 60 years and patient is having osteoarthritis we should do total hip replacement and if osteoarthritis is not present do hemiarthroplasty that is bipolar hemiarthroplasty next is intertrochanteric fracture intertrochanteric fracture is extra capsular seen in 7th to 8th decade moderate to severe trauma causes intertrochanteric fracture in uh, this fracture there will be severe pain swelling ecchymosis around the greater trochanter shortening will be more than one inch external rotation deformity is 45 to 90 degree most common complication is malunion classification of intertrochanteric fracture includes evans classification and boyd griffiths classification management of Intertrochanteric fracture include internal fixation with dynamic hip screw or dynamic condylar screw or proximal femoral nail. Next topic is fracture shaft of femur. Fracture shaft of femur is seen in young adults. It is seen in 20 to 30 years of age, mainly in males. This fracture shaft of femur is associated with severe trauma. Classification of fracture shaft of femur is proximal one-third, in the middle one-third as well as in the distal one-third. Most common fracture shaft of femur is seen in middle one-third. Supracondylar fracture femur is seen in distal one-third. Complications of fracture shaft of femur is hypovolemic shock, fat embolism syndrome, infection, knee stiffness, malunion, delayed union, non-union. Management of fracture shaft of femur includes if uh, the patient is less than 6 months of age, we can give a paulic harness splint. If the patient is in between 6 months to 5 years of age, uh, we should uh, give a hip spica cast or we should use gallows traction or Bryan's traction. If the patient is in between 5 to 10 years of age, TEN that is titanium elastic nailing should be done. If the patient is of uh, more than 10 years, uh, intramedullary interlocking nailing should be done. Another topic is fat embolism syndrome. Fat embolism syndrome is seen in young males of 20 to 30 years of age. This fat embolism syndrome is mainly present with fracture shaft of femur which is uh, more than 48 to 72 hours. One important triad in fat embolism syndrome is Bergman's triad. Here the cord is three C's. First C is cerebral, second C is cutaneous, third C is cardiopulmonary. So the cerebral things that happens during fat embolism syndrome is delirium, confusion, convulsion, disorientation, stupor and coma. Cutaneous things are petechial rashes on the chest. 
and third c is cardiopulmonary here the patient presents with dyspnea tachypnea tachycardia cyanosis hypoxia and hypoxemia management of fat embolism syndrome includes oxygen iv fluids forced alkaline diuresis iv steroids to counter chemical pneumonitis pulmonary embolectomy and one another thing is heparin is used for limited patients because uh, heparin is a double edged sword like it is used only in limited patients next is waddell's triad what is waddell's triad it is femur fracture plus head injury plus intrathoracic or intra abdominal injury sequence of condition presenting with shortening is posterior hip displacement more than fracture shaft of femur more than subtrochanteric fracture more than intertrochanteric fracture more than fracture neck of femur next topic is ctev or club foot here congenital malformation of ankle leg and foot can be seen this is a complex characterized by cavus varus as well as equinus cavus means increased arch of the foot varus consists of adduction as well as inversion adduction at the talo navicular joint and inversion at the talo calcaneal joint next is equinus equinus is seen in tibiotalar joint incidence is 1 in 1000 male to female proportion is 2 is to 1 most important cause is idiopathic most common association is neural tube defect that is spina bifida occulta 60% of the cases are bilateral this is seen in asians the gene affected in this case is pit xl that is pitxl tbx4 gene pathogenesis include theories like developmental arrest theory myofibroblastic theory primary germ plasm defect theory bony pathology is talus becomes small and hypoplastic talo navicular joint subluxation or dislocation happens it causes over contraction of tendo achilles as well as tibialis posterior muscle when the tendo achilles gets over contracted plantar flexion causes equinus and when the tibialis posterior muscle gets over contracted adduction and inversion happens which lead to varus clinical spectrum is dorsi flexion test becomes positive this is the inability to approximate the dorsum of foot to anteromedial border of leg on taking x ray kites angle or talo calcaneal angle less than 25 degree is diagnostic if the uh, kites angle or talo calcaneal angle is in between 30 to 55 degree uh, that means it is normal if it is less than 25 it is diagnostic of ctev or club foot management is at birth to infancy that is from birth to 1 year of age uh, we we have to do ponseti technique that is uh, manipulation as well as casting so manipulation is done by the doctor it is not done by mother here we what we do is reversal of deformity is done this is started as soon as possible after birth and casting it is also done by doctor first cast is put that is lanugo cast is put and um, uh, this is done uh, till uh, umbilical stump sheds off uh, five to seven cast are put on serial weekly basis uh, and one more thing is this ponseti technique is found by dr ignelio ponseti uh, his date of birth is on uh, 3rd june so this 3rd june is uh, known as club foot day sequence is like cavus to varus varus to equinus next is about ponseti's technique ponseti's technique first of all we have to do immobilization immobilization during day time is by putting ctev shoes and uh, no heel should be put for equinus uh, this uh, straight in a border helps in adduction and also outer shoe raise helps in inversion immobilization done at night is by using dennis brown splint that is this is mainly used for abduction next is from the age group 1 to 5 years how should we manage from the age group 1 to 5 years Uh, the method is postromedial soft tissue release should be done that is pmstr it is done by turcos operation and also mckay's release is done and if this postromedial soft tissue release 
uh, gets failed and if the patient is more than 3 years we should do bony surgeries here uh, there are many procedures like lateral column shortening procedures by always osteotomy delvine evan surgery lich blow surgery and if this lateral column shortening procedures gets failed Mm, and also the patient is more than 10 years we should do triple arthrodesis what is triple arthrodesis it is the surgical fusion of three joints which are the three joints talonavicular joint talocalcaneal joint and also calcaneo cuboid joint the most common complication for triple arthrodesis is talonavicular joint pseudoarthrosis next topic is injuries with eponyms first of all about jumpers fracture it is a h-shaped sacral fracture due to fall from height next is jumpers knee what is jumpers knee it is tendonitis of patellar ligament next is sinting larsen johansen syndrome it is partial rupture or avulsion of patellar tendon from lower pole of patella which causes traction here tendonitis in the ligamentum petalle is the most important thing bumpers fracture bumpers fracture is the fracture of lateral condyle of tibia next is sigan's fracture sigan's fracture is fracture tibial condyle extending into tibial spine which causes anterior cruciate ligament tear next is toddler's fracture or cast fracture Toddler's fracture or cast fracture is seen in children. This is caused due to fall from height. It is a spiral fracture. Mainly toddler's fracture or cast fracture is seen in tibia. Next is O'Donoghue unhappy triad. What is this? This is the injury to anterior cruciate ligament, medial collateral ligament and also medial menisci. What is aviator's fracture? Aviator's fracture is the fracture neck of talus. In detail about fracture neck of talus, avascular necrosis appears within 4 to 6 weeks in fracture neck of talus and also in later it disappears. Most common complication is subtalar arthritis. Here the body of talus shows a Hawking sign and a good x-ray sign is revascularization. Next is lover's fracture or Don Juan's fracture. Here the intraarticular fracture of calcaneum is seen which is due to fall from height usually bilateral most common complication is malunion on x-ray bowler's angle will be reduced and crucial angle of gisane will be increased so normal bowler's angle is 20 to 40 degree which gets decreased on lover's fracture and um, normal crucial angle of gisane is 100 to 145 degree here in lover's fracture crucial angle of gisane gets elevated next is ports fracture ports fracture is the medial and lateral malleolus fracture next is cotton's fracture cotton's fracture is fracture of medial malleolus lateral malleolus and also posterior malleolus next is pylon's fracture it is the intraarticular fracture of distal tibial plafond with metaphyseal communication Hoffa's fracture. Hoffa's fracture is coronal plane fracture of one or both femoral condyle. Next is nutcracker's fracture. It is intraarticular fracture of cuboid. Next is Lisfranc's fracture. That is tarsometatarsal joint fracture. Chopard's fracture. Chopard's fracture is the fracture of intatarsal joint. Runner's fracture. It is the fracture of spiral distal fibula. This is also known as hairline fracture of distal fibula. Next is Jones fracture which is very important. It is the fracture of fifth metatarsal at metaphyseo diaphyseal junction. Next is pseudo Jones fracture or dancer's fracture or tennis fracture. This is the fracture of fifth metatarsal at tuberosity or tip due to violent pull of peroneus brevis. Next is tennis elbow. What is tennis elbow? It is lateral epicondylitis. It is the other name for tennis elbow. Most commonly it affects the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Next is golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow is also known as medial epicondylitis. In golfers tennis elbow is seen more than golfer's elbow. Tennis leg is the rupture of medial head of gastrocnemius muscle. Next is straddle fracture. Straddle fracture is the bilateral superior and inferior pubic rami fracture. 
Duvernay's fracture is the crescent shaped iliac wing fracture. March fracture is the stress fracture of shaft of second metatarsal bone. Next is about the tractions. Dunlop traction and Smith's traction is placed in supracondylar fracture humerus. Crutchfield tongues and Gardenwell's tractions are placed in cervical spine injury. Gallows traction and Bryan's traction is placed in fracture shaft of femur in age less than 2 years. Perkins traction is placed in fracture shaft of femur in adults. Buck's traction is the modified skin traction for lower back pain. Agnes Hunt traction is used in flexion deformity of hip. Next is about X-ray views. Judith view is seen in fracture acetabulum. Zanka view is seen in AC joint fracture. That is acromioclavicular joint fracture. Striker notch view is seen in Hillsack's lesion. West point axillary view is done in Bunkart's lesion. Oblique or PA view wrist in ulnar deviation is done for scaphoid fracture. Von Rosen view is done in DDH. Merchant's view is done in patellar subluxation. Mortise view is done in angle AP view in 15 degree internal rotation in case of syndesmotic injury. Canale view is done in fracture of talar neck. Harris and Broden view is done in fracture calcaneum. Serendipity view is done in sternoclavicular joint fracture. Bow catcher's view is done in erosions of rheumatoid arthritis. Swimmer's view is done in lower cervical spine fracture. Next is about splints in ortho. Cocup splint is done for radial nerve palsy. Knuckle bender splint is done for ulna nerve palsy. Aeroplane splint is done for brachial plexus palsy. Turn buckle splint is done for Voxman's ischemic contracture. Coptician splint is done for fracture shaft of humerus. Polic harness splint and also von Rosen splint. These both are done for DDH. Ankle foot orthosis is done for foot drop. Taylor's brace is done for thoracic spine in case of trauma, TB or tumor. Next is about the cast in ortho. Handshake cast is put in collis fracture. Glass holding cast is put in fracture scaphoid. Cylinder or tube cast is put in fracture patella. Patella tendon bearing cast is put in fracture shaft of tibia. Minerva cast is put in cervical spine injury. Reserves cast is put in scoliosis. U or hanging cast is put in fracture shaft of humerus. Turn buckle cast is put in scoliosis. Next topic is angles in ortho. Cope's angle is seen in scoliosis. K angle or kyphosis angle or Dixon's angle is seen in port spine. Q angle or quadriceps angle is seen in recurrent patellar dislocation. Powell's angle and also Garden's angle, these both are seen in fracture neck of femur. Bowman's angle is seen in supracondylar fracture humerus. Bowler's angle is seen in fracture calcaneum. Gisane's angle is seen in fracture calcaneum. Miori's angle is seen in pes cavus. Kite's angle is seen in CTEV or club foot. Next topic is moral levelly lesion. It is the post-traumatic closed degloving soft tissue injury in skin and subcutaneous tissue. Vessels and lymphatics perforate and fill the potential space with blood, serosanguinous fluid and necrotic fat. Patient presents with enlarging painful mass in anterolateral thigh and close to the greater trochanter. Treatment is aspiration and tube drainage.